Can you tell us uh, how it was decided to release an EP and uh, more or less at the same time an album? Was it uh, a listenable decision? Or? Yeah, definitely. We wanted to release uh, the EP. Well, we were under the impression the EP was going to come out at a different time, totally. Uh, probably around August to coincide with the festival stuff. Um, so, well, originally he said it was going to be out earlier, like about a month or two earlier, and then the album was going to come out. But then he decided to put it out in August, you know, when we came over here to do the festivals, which would probably would have made more sense. But uh, then all of a sudden it came out right before the album, so I don't know what happened there. So, but it's all right. I think it came out too close to the album. It had no, it had no impact. It just everything just came out, and that was it. So, I don't know. It wasn't our fault. <laughs> and considering the recording sessions, uh, were all the songs recorded at the same time? And yeah. you, okay. Yeah, yeah. We had 13 songs ready. Uh, we recorded them, mixed them all at the same time. And then we just had to figure out which songs were going to go on the EP, which we didn't really decide until everything was completely done. You know, that was, that was decided at the end, you know. So the songs we picked for the EP, well actually no, the instrumental song we knew was going to be on the EP. That we knew wasn't going to be on the, on the album. But the other two songs, uh, you know, we took a little time, you know, to figure out which songs were going to work better with the album and which songs were going to work with the EP. The album songs, the 10 that are on the album all seem to work well together. And the EP songs are a little bit different in their own way. That's why we left those for the EP. So. And uh, in the past, uh, did it already happen to have maybe uh, extra material after the, the studio time? No, not at all, ever. <laughs> Never. That was the first time. So first this is probably the most material we cranked out in uh, one session since the beginning we of the We never ever wrote career. 13 songs. I mean, we, have 13 we never songs. wrote more than 10 songs. <laughs> no, we have 13, one of them being like an instrumental, which we've never done before. So, so yeah, it was definitely a, a first for us. And considering the, uh, the quantity, the inspiration, uh, uh, is it the best time for the band to see that uh, you have now uh, more uh, tracks composed? Um, Or you I, are I'm excited that we, I'm excited that we have the two releases. I'm si excited that we have an EP because uh, Lauren always wanted to do the EP, Lauren from Listenable. And uh, when we uh, signed with Listenable a couple of years back uh, while we were recording on Holy Cult, He suggested, yeah, let's do an EP, maybe a couple cool songs, you know, maybe some live tracks. But it just never happened because we never had extra material. We never had the time. So this time we filmed the show back in April, you know, for, for a DVD. And we didn't know what we were going to do with it. And then we decided well, we could put that on an extra thing for, a D, uh, for an EP, if we do an EP. So then that's when, that was the spark, you know. And then we had uh, Lauren pushing us, come on, you know, do a couple extra songs. We'll do an EP. So, uh... So we're yeah we're excited because the the EP is cool it's definitely cool you know because the DVD is is much cooler than the original one that we put out a couple of years ago because the show is a much warmer show it's more underground looking uh, you know and then the songs on the EP are, are definitely much different than the songs on the album in their own way even though they were all written and recorded at the same time it's different you know so so it's cool to have two releases come out you know so, so we're happy aren't we? Sure, sure. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, that's the second official uh, DVD, the live DVD that you are releasing. Uh, there was a first one, Bringing Down the World. Yeah, right, right. And now this uh, EP thing. Right. Um, do you prefer the DVD format compared to uh, the usual live CD album? Um, it's cool because you had the visual there, you know. We're We're in that type of age where kids want to see everything, you know what I'm saying? You go online, you find videos and YouTube and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, I think it's cool to have a visual with the actual music. I mean, you know, not that a live uh, live CD is bad. I mean, you know, as long as it's recorded correctly. But uh, yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I, I like to see it, like especially for kids who who don't who are younger and they can't get out to shows. It's not easy for them or people in the areas where we don't usually tour. You know, it's good for them, you know, to see the band in a live situation, you know, like that, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for years now you are working with Paul Horofino as uh, a producer. Yes. Yeah. So, um, do you think that uh, your um, relation with him has uh, changed through the times and maybe evolved to maybe like in, in a family, in a way? Oh, definitely, right? Paul's, yeah, he's Paul's like part, part of the family. family. And it's, the, the more albums we do, I mean, the more we... <laughs> 
we know what to expect from each other. So each time it's just like a cool experience. You know, he just knows that up. Oh, Malaysian's coming over again. You know, and it's, you know, it's a good time. It's always a good time. So for us, it's important to be comfortable in that situation recording. And uh, with Paul, it's just very easy. And um, you know, any input he has is always welcome because he's coming from a different point of view, and he can tell us what works and doesn't work. Like musically, if there's something that sounds a little weird, he'll let us know, and we'll usually change it to make it better. And uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it's just definitely a good experience working with him. And like I said, it's a comfortable situation, and uh, for us, that's that's one of the most important things when we're recording. Okay, considering the, the producing today, uh, a lot of production, mm -hmm. and you, you still have this uh, organic sound. So, in a way, um, don't you have sometimes uh, uh, the idea to sound maybe more um, uh, tricky or maybe um, uh, digital in a way? Sometimes, I mean, I know the label, you know, suggests maybe trying something different, you know, but I don't know. We like we like the way our stuff sounds. It's different. It's I think it's a good sound for the kind of music we play, you know? I mean, for us it works. I mean, I like that natural sound where drums sound like drums, <laughs> you know, and guitars sound like guitars, you know? And all together it has like a cool... It's not overproduced, it has a cool feeling, you know, because the music is dirty. It's it's It has a certain dark kind of feeling to it, and I think if it's too shined up and over polished it, it loses a little bit of that feeling you know it's like i'm just going back to stuff that i liked when i was younger you know like when ride the lightning first came out it was dirty there was nothing overproduced about it, it just dirty it was gritty uh possessed seven churches you know stuff like that i mean it was just dirty sounding and i think that's what that's what made stuff like that so unique you know it was well played and it was very heavy and extreme and it was dirty sounding if you recorded those records now digitally they wouldn't be good they wouldn't sound anywhere near as good they wouldn't have that vibe they wouldn't have that feeling you know and some people today don't get that you know what I'm saying but that's that's why we do things the way we do it you know what I'm saying yeah, it would be cool to see how our stuff would sound maybe with a different producer here and there but the bottom line is we're happy with Paul we're comfortable there, we look forward to working with him, and I don't think we sound like anybody else, you know, which is important to us. I mean, you know, it's it's kind of like who we are, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's important for any band to have a unique sound, a unique style, and their own identity, so. Okay, uh, today you are on tour, and I suppose uh, it will be for a long time with uh, Crisune and Grave. Yeah. Um, we can say in a way that we have uh, a few different styles of death metal. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how do you see Himalayan on the bill? Do you see more uh, old school vibe or maybe uh, middle? I think we're vibe? mixed. I think we're mixed. Uh, every band on the tour is different, like you said, which is cool. Dawn of Azazel from New Zealand different than the other three bands. Uh, Grave is a very old school band, you know, with a slow, heavy, crunchy sound, you know what I'm saying? Uh, doing it the way they've been doing it for 20 years. Chrisian, they've been around for a long time, but their style is totally different than the three of us, you know? They're more just like, just bludgeoning, straightforward, you know, just hit you in the face kind of stuff, very fast, very uh, militant sounding, you know? And then we have a combination of all the different elements, you know what I'm saying? We're kind of all over the place, so it's good. Every band's extreme in their own way, but very different, you know? And I think we fit in, obviously we have a lot of old school people coming out to see us, you know, because we've been around for 20 years, but there's also not a lot of younger kids coming out to see us, you know, which is good. So I think we appeal to people all across the board, you know, the old school heads and the, and the new school kids, so. Okay, and yeah, uh, considering the life on the road uh, after 20 years, uh, is it still motivating to take a bus with 20 or 30 guys, maybe stinking guys and going <laughs> to tour no, the world with maybe, them? maybe, definitely stinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I love it. I wouldn't want it any other way. It's fun. It's awesome. A lot of, uh, it's like a brotherhood, you know what I'm saying? A lot of camaraderie. Uh, everybody's hungry. Everybody's uh, um, just very eager to get out there every night and play and do their best. You know, everybody's uh, gentlemen, you know what I'm saying? Good people on that bus, you know, and it's like fun. It's still fun, so we don't mind at all. 
okay? And by now you are still young. Um, how do you see uh, the, the years that are coming and maybe the time when you will uh, getting older and older? Uh, do you think it's possible to continue this life for maybe 20 or 30 years? Well, getting into the 30 years now, you're pushing it a little too far. <laughs> you know, you just do it as long as we we have fun with it and as long as we can, you know, hold ourselves up on our legs and we'll be good. You know, I mean, we just enjoy it. So what comes, comes. You know, I mean, right now, for us, it's like it's only gotten better with each album and each tour. We Things have always progressed and gotten better musically, band-wise, tour-wise, the, you know, where we get with the band. So for us, it's, you know, we just keep going until we want to stop. You know? I think we still got a number of good years left in us, so <laughs> we're just going to keep at it and do what we enjoy doing. Okay, uh, you have tried a lot of labels through the years. There was Roadrunner, Metal Blade, now Listenable. Uh, Listenable is maybe uh, um, a bit uh, uh, little compared with the Roadrunner and Metal Blade. So. Uh, Are you satisfied and maybe still satisfied with the label and the opportunity yeah, you will I mean, have? Right now we're actually at the end of, we have Listenable here in, in Europe, which is great because we're like the big band on a smaller label. So for him, he's really into the band 100%. He likes the music and he's pretty much got the distribution of the majors anyway. So for us, it's great. And he gives us the attention, you know, and then in the US we have Century Media. So they're a big label and, you know, they do a really good job. So at this point, You know, it works for us, you know, just, we'll see what the next step is. But at this point, you know, we're pretty happy and uh, it works out well because Century Media takes care of their, you know, takes care of the States. Uh, Listenable take care of Europe and so far so good. Okay, compared uh, maybe uh, with the past years, with the, the past members, um, do you are still in contact with uh, all the, um, the people that were invested in the band? Maybe your whole yeah, now and then, I mean, we hear from one or the other now and then you know like everyone back to Neil who was in the band like years ago still lives on my block so you know you're running to them now and then but you know they all have their own things that they're doing they're not really doing music anymore so right now the guys that we got now with uh, Steve and Bill this has been a really good lineup for a few years now and this is pretty much gonna be it you know what I mean it takes time to find people that are gonna go the distance you know what I mean because it's, it's not easy not it's not for everybody and obviously people Either they get married or they they, they, they want to do other things. And, you know, it's understandable because obviously you start this when you're like a teenager, you know. And then, you know, when you get into your 30s, you know, it's like, uh, you know, things change in people's lives. You know what I mean? So people's priorities change and uh, you have to really, you know, you really have to be uh, passionate about it. You know, so luckily we found Bill and Steve who are both as equally as passionate as we are. And, um It's been going really good, you know. Now we're, I think, both live and musically, we're at the top of our game now. So, for a band that's been around for like 20 years to be at the top of the game at this time, it's, for us, we consider that a really good thing. So, we're happy about it. Considering you two, uh, is there some uh, tensions sometimes between you, or is it uh, uh, since years? Oh, that's true, yeah, we just finished <laughs> <laughs> We just got fully extended. <laughs> can, can we say it's like maybe in a marriage with a good and high uh, high uh, period and uh, maybe a low with period? With this guitar, I think way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a marriage between the four of us, you know, because you gotta you gotta live with these guys, you know, for like months on the road, you know what I'm saying, in a bus, in a van, you know what I'm saying, so... In a car. Yeah, yeah, in a car. In a car. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, everyone knows their, their limits, I guess. We're not really, I don't know, in, in our group, we pretty much get along pretty good, you know what I mean? If, yeah, we're lucky. We, we, we all, we're all on the same page. We're all pretty goofy and stupid and silly, and, you know, we get along good. We have a stupid sense of humor, you know, and it's good. You need that. You have to have laughter in this music business, otherwise uh, you fucking, <laughs> you go crazy. <laughs> Okay, to end the interview, uh, do you have a special message considering the, the last two releases? Oh, just check them out. I'm sure anyone that's listened to us for a while will enjoy it because I think it's some of the most aggressive and dark stuff we've ever done. Yeah. And I think people that aren't into this kind of music could get into it because I think it's very, it's got a lot of dimension, there's a lot of different things going on. Uh, I think untypical of, you know, your, what you would typically think of death metal. So. It's got a lot to offer, so I think, you know, they're both worth checking out. I mean, the EP, even though there's only three songs on it, they've got one song that's like 
really one of the most aggressively fast songs we've done. You got another one that's very mixed up, a lot of different elements, and then you got the instrumental, which we've never done before. So even for, for the fans, I'm sure they would totally dig it. And uh, it's got the DVD on it. And then the album, you know, it's 10 songs, all different stuff, you know, different things going on. So it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, definitely some of our angriest, uh, more aggressive uh, material, I think, all in all. Uh, some of our catchiest and some of our most uh, uh, musical in a lot of ways, melodic uh, without being um, dark melodic, you know, not happy melodic, you know, so it's good. I think uh, it has something for everybody. <laughs> thanks for your time. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. And thanks to all the fans for supporting us over these years. That's right, what he said. That's right. Touche. <laughs> See you next time. Malaysia now. <laughs>